Excerpts from the petition submitted by 20 enslaved people uh, would be an appropriate text to have on the petition, and therefore it became a petition line. Um, I had the honor of looking at the actual document uh, last Thursday um, and was just totally impressed by what seemed to be a calm, purposeful, attempt to speak to humanity and of course it was ignored so this project has for me personally represented some of the lowest of our nature but the fact that we have responded to that with a grand expression of respect and as you know that petition was finally signed so this petition line represents that past being brought into the future or the present by way of the petition finally being signed. And so it seemed befitting that on that path, there would be an information marker. And being a designer and a sculptor, you never pull something out of a catalog. <laughs> you always take the opportunity to further the artistic statement. So what you're looking at is to provide information about the site about the artwork on the site and a history of where this story began. The patterning on the marker represents time, the layering of time. And that just seemed very appropriate since there is this historical present and future objective of the memorial. So this is the information marker. So, if we move to the beginning of the story. There are people carrying the meat of And while the community figures speak to all of us in very inclusive terms, I felt compelled to try to convey a sense of identity to those folks who are unnamed. And so these are the entry figures. The male figure representing the first enslaved individual brought in Portsmouth, the female figure representing Mother Africa. I gave you the entry figures. <laughs> I 
And as you may already have known from uh, the model and such, uh, they're standing on opposite sides of a granite wall. And they're reaching around that wall, and their hands are not touching. As a designer, as a soldier, I went through a lot of uh, mental turmoil about whether or not their hands should be grasping, whether or not they should not be acknowledged. And it was a matter of presenting it to the committee. And the unanimous decision was that it should be maybe an inch or so far. And you can imagine what that means. Um, I'm not going to say what I think, because I want to be very wrong. But obviously, slavery broke up in Africa. But we're now in the process of bringing things back. Thank you all for being here. 
I thank all of you. I would like to acknowledge some people who are present today and uh, to thank them for being here. Um, we're very honored uh, to have uh, with the mayor of Portsmouth, members of the city council. The mayor will be introduced more fully later. I'd like to acknowledge Chris Dwyer, Zalita Morgan, Eric Spear, Jack Thorson, Stephanie Shaheen, who is not only here as a counselor, but also here on behalf of her mother, Senator Jean Shaheen. Uh, Steve Monier, who is here on behalf of Senator Kelly Ayotte. Um, I've never been seen before. Those who were hauled over in chains were being carried through the streets of this city being pulled by black horses handled by a white man as the town embraced and received. What a sight that must be for them. I'm going to ask that you might stand with me as we pray. And there is a scripture that I would share with you from the 46th Psalm. God is our strong refuge. He is truly our helper in times of trouble. For this reason we do not fear when the earth shakes and the mountains tumble into the depths of the sea. When its waves crash and fall and the mountains shake before the surging sea, sea law, rivers, channels, bring joy to the city of God, the special holy dwelling place of the sovereign one. God lives within it. It cannot be moved. God rescues it at the break of dawn. Eternally gracious God, our Father, we gather here this morning, first of all, saying thank you for this day, a day we've never seen before, nor shall we see again. We pray, God, that you receive the souls of these thy people who are reburied on this day. That they, O oh God, have found a resting place and peace with you. We pray now for these people. We pray for this city of Portsmouth, where the hearts have been opened, the minds have been receptive. We pray, God, that they shall come in all of us, black and white, Jew and Gentile, Christian, whatever they may be, to be able to walk together in the halls of glory, saying hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. You may be seated. When discussing this project, I tend to think of words like vision, passion, unity, inspiration, commitment, respect, and of course, community. This project says something about who we are and how we as a community value people. <coughs> Only a piece of today is looking backward to the past, to the story of the enslaved and the free Africans buried at Chestnut Street. In the tiles that surround this place, designed by students at the middle school, in the community and the community figures that surround the burial vault, and in the ancestral vigil services held last night and this morning at the New Hope Baptist Church, we begin looking to the future. We as a community have sent a powerful message. Each person has dignity, each person deserves respect, and each person contributes to society and our community in their own way. I reflect on the work of so many volunteers who were determined to see this project through. Those who told the story over and over to their friends, their colleagues, their family members, and to anyone they came in contact with. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. A uh, poem that I have written, I wrote is Beneath the Surface of Life. And it's, I would, it will probably, um, I will be restating so much that has already been said, but in verse, and I hope you will enjoy it. 
The story of my debut into this ancient world, designed on canvas, waiting to be unfurled. Born on the floor of Africa's rich black soil, destined for greatness, free of earthly toil. Showered with the history of long-standing pride, trampled by marauders, carelessly tossed aside. Herded like cattle into the ship's pit of despair, wrenched from the motherland to Lord knows where. My language, my tradition, my dreams of tomorrow, tossed heartlessly, heartlessly overboard into a sea of sorrow. The sad reality of the shift in my life deeply pained my heart as though thrust with a knife. For I was yet a child thrown into that dreary pit. Not a care for my humaneness, not one little bit. As destiny would have it, I grew into manhood, standing tall in body and mind as best I could. Shackled by slavery and weighed down to a stoop, the daily indignities I found so hard to recoup. My tormentors, no, not my master, a title I refuse to recognize in a body so inhumanly abused. Then to an inhospitable place I was sold called Strawberry Bank, where I was forever cold. Settling down to a different beat of the drum, given promises at last that freedom would come. Slippery those promises by men of misdeed, pompous lives driven by their insatiable greed. Sadly, at the mercy of man's proneness to strife, I, re I remain beneath the surface of life. But all was not lost as God would have it be by those unearthed bones who cried out in 2003. The time had come for a people to right the wrongs echoed in the abyss of those woeful slave songs. Alas, no more massa, no more chains, nor ship at dock to bid on me for sale at that hated auction block. My journey is completed to the heavens above. I now rest in peace to a true master's love. So, stay the course, old Portsmouth. Hold fast the throttle you've set to balance the scale of justice towards today triumphantly met. Thank you. When it soon be Created by Portsmouth Youth. 
We spoke that day about these Odinga symbols and their purpose in West African culture. That they carry the values of the people from one generation to the next. We spoke particularly about the Sankofa symbol and the lovely proverb with which, with which it is associated. It is not wrong to go back for that which has been forgotten. 